is dialed. Please check the code or number and try your call again. Thank you. This is a recording from Florida, New York. The number you are calling cannot be completed as dialed. Please check the code or number and try your call again. Thank you. The recording played twice, and if you dial a digit on this silence, this is a step in Florida, New York, and we're still in the Warwick Valley Telephone Company area. Here's a vacant level on a second selector. We'll be dialing the local office code 651 plus a vacant thousand group. The 6 absorbs on the first selector. The 5 cuts into a second selector where the 1 absorbs. And now here's a 2, but there's no 2000s group. Let's try 651-3000. In this case, we're going to get a blocked level, which probably means there isn't a 3000 group, but the recording was busy. Listening to the reorder, you may hear some clicks, which correspond to other callers hitting the reorder and then hanging up. Someone comes in right here and hangs up. And then another caller came in and hung up. Okay, here is a local call to another 651 number. Okay, two observations. First of all, the ringtone sounds very delicate on an actual working line compared to on the vacant level trunk. Apparently, they didn't attenuate it at all for that. There's another thing that we've heard twice now, and that is this. Here it is from vacant level. And here it is on a working number. Those are two different frequencies, actually. And I don't know if that variation is on purpose. It could be on purpose. After all, two frequencies that close were used in another place that we remember from the 1960s. Apollo 8, Houston, over. The tone at the beginning is higher than the tone at the end. So the technology certainly could distinguish between those fairly close frequencies. However, knowing this phone company, maybe it's just two different brands of equipment cobbled together and eh, close enough. In any case, that high-pitched tone, or tones, is, or are, frequencies used on multi-party lines. In the Sanford, North Carolina program, part of the March 1977 phone trip, I explained the function those tones have. This office, instead of a callback circuit, has a ringback circuit. You dial 40 plus two digits, one digit corresponds to however your phone rings, and the other digit corresponds to the way the phone rings of the person you want to call. After dialing those two digits, you hang up, and your phone plus the phone of the person you want to reach will ring. Now, of course, we don't have anybody else on the line. This is a payphone, 
So the digit 1 corresponds to the way this ordinary bell rings. I dialed 4031, but only the ring corresponding to the digit 1 rang our bell. Now what I'm going to do next is dial 4016. What that does is it puts the ordinary ring, 20 hertz, on both wires at the same time. Now on a party line, each bell is connected from one side of the telephone line to ground. And that's why that yellow wire has to be there for traditional phones. The yellow wire is so that where you have a party line, the bell can be wired from one side of the line to ground. The party whose code is 1 has his bell wired from the negative side of the line to ground. Party number 6 has his bell wired from the positive side of the line to ground. Both use the regular 20 hertz signal. So if you dial 4016, party 1 and party 6 will both ring simultaneously because this particular ringback circuit sends the ring for party 1 and party 6 simultaneously, one on each wire. If you have a regular ringer, a ringer that's connected between the two wires of the line with no ground connection, which is the case for all non-party line telephones, including payphones, that same signal being sent down both wires simultaneously will mostly just cancel itself out. We should be recording our comments as we do this. I've got it ringing the both the same ring on both ring and tip, so the phone's just going ding occasionally. As you can hear, it's going to pick up now. Now here's dialing our own number and getting the busy signal. That was really loud, and it did cause the tape to print through. I'm not going to take the print through out. That's very difficult. Just know that there was not an echo of the busy signal in between the impulses. Now, if I were going to make a map of this office, that second selector that we get when we dial 6-5 would have to be called selector 2 slash 5. And the reason is that the way they've built this is such that you get the same selector group dialing just 2 as when you dial 65. When you dial the local office code 651, the initial 6 is absorbed on the first selector, and then the 5 goes into that second selector where the 1 is absorbed, but you don't have to dial the 1. As a result, you can call intra office by dialing 2 plus the last four digits. Here's an intra office call dialed as 2 plus the last four. The reason that second selector is on 2 as well as 5 is because of Pine Island, whose code is 258, plus another code beginning with 2 that I'll discuss in a minute. Now there's no 651-5000 group, so that level is available. So what they can do is have you go to that second selector on a 2, and then the 5 goes out to Pine Island, which then absorbs the 8. You could also reach Pine Island numbers by dialing this local office code 651 followed by 5-8.
that works too. Here's dialing 651, our local office code, then 5, that goes to Pine Island, then 8, which absorbs there, then a vacant level. Flashing to reset it, trying to get it to start cleanly. Reporting from Pine Island, New York. This is a recording from Pine Island, New York. Your number cannot be completed as dialed. Please check the number or code you are dialing. And dial again, or ask your operator for assistance. Thank you. This is a recording from Pine Island, New York. Your number cannot be completed as dialed. Please check the number or code you are dialing. And dial again, or ask your operator for assistance. Thank you. Ah, did you hear that? Now, I didn't do anything with it, but that click at the end of the recording was some sort of a reset of the switching train. Or ask your operator for assistance. Thank you. I probably could have dialed the last four digits of another 258 number and had it go through at that point. Some intercept lines will do that. They'll somehow reset the selector. Others I've seen have actually been able to get it to go to a blocked level, which is a really neat trick, and I know I've published that somewhere. Now here's a regular number in 258 dialed normally. <laughs> Here is a test tone in 258 Pine Island. I look at the switching train, I'm not sure it was such a good idea to use the same selectors for the 2 level as the 651 incoming. The reason is that you want your coin phones to be in the 9000 group. That's because operators all over North America, when they see the 9000 group as the number being called, suspect it's a coin phone. If it's not in the 9000 group, the operator may have to specifically check, and she doesn't always do that. Anytime there's a coin phone that is not in the 9000 group, there is a serious chance that somebody long distance is going to make a collect call to a coin phone. They'll have somebody waiting at the phone saying, yeah, sure, I'll accept the charges. And then the telephone company that owns the payphone gets stuck with a bill. So that's why you want to keep your payphones in the 9000 group. Now they are trying to save selectors by having the two level go to the same selector group as the intra office 651 incoming selector. Well, that wouldn't be such a bad idea, were it not for the fact that there is a local office code that begins with 2-9. Oh boy, 2-9, you see. 2 goes to the 651 incoming. 9 has to go to this other office. And that means you can't have a 9000 group in 651. That's why our coin phone here 
has the number 6518012. So the idea to send the twos to the 651 incoming selector does save equipment, it just makes it so their coin phones can't be in the 9000 group. Here I'm going to dial 2940, which is a vacant level in Goshen. Goshen is part of the Highland Telephone Company that we were visiting in programs 7 through 9 of this series. The 2 goes to that second selector, shared with 651 incoming. The 9 goes to Goshen, and you can hear that it's a wire trunk. It makes a kind of a little hummy noise when you cut into the trunk. The 4 absorbs in Goshen, and then the 0 is a vacant level. We've just dialed 29 and we're sitting on the Goshen incoming selector. And this particular selector has a hum that sounds almost like Bell System City Low Tone. It has a similar overtone constellation. I'll filter it out in a few spots. See, there it is. It's subtle and it's coincidental, but sounds a lot like it. Now when we dial the 4 of the 294 office code, this hum will continue. Then when we dial the thousands group, it will go away because we'll be on another selector that doesn't have it. Then when we dial the hundreds, it'll get quieter because we're on the connector, which uses quiet power. All right, so this 294 number doesn't answer. Let's look up a valid number. There's an Ed's taxi service we can try calling, and we'll see what this phone does when a person answers. She hasn't hung up yet, but I should point out this is a post-pay phone. We're supposed to put in a dime to be able to talk to her, and we didn't have to. Yeah, anyway, Bob? Yeah. Yeah, I was telling you about this girl over there, Taxi. <laughs> You're kidding. No, it's all right, I'm not kidding. Yeah, you girl. Yeah. Hello? Hello? Next, for whatever reason, Ben is going to dial 29 and then four more digits beginning with 5. There's no 295 code. Actually, we'll be calling 294 5 something something something. You don't have to dial that 4. 
Hello? Hello? Yes, Hello. is this uh, 295 No, wrong number. Thank you. 295? Warwick, the company headquarters, 986 is the office code, used to be a step, but now it's an ESC, and like many ESCs, it has a feature that when you call a ringing number, it rings right away and then it falls into a regular ring cadence. So you get this unusual immediate ring and then a regular rhythmic ring after that. You'll see what I mean. Here's 986-2222. The 9 is absorbed here. The 8 goes into a local Warwick T-carrier trunk. And when the trunk sees 6 plus 4 digits, it connects you to the appropriate 986 number. Here's another call to a working Warwick 986 number, and again you can hear that ring feature. I'm going to call 986-1111, skipping the initial 9, which isn't necessary. And it's going to go to the vacant code recording, which puts a ringtone on first until the recording gets around to the beginning. When the recording starts up, I'm going to flash, and that actually makes it reset back to the ring. Steps do this, but I didn't know ESCs can do it too. This is a recording. We cannot complete your call as dialed. Please consult your directory or dial 411 for directory assistance. This is a recording. Here's dialing 8, which goes to Warwick, and then 11111. Almost the same thing as we did before and it'll get to the same recording. This is a recording. We cannot complete your call as dialed. Please consult your directory or dial 411 for directory assistance. This is a recording. We cannot complete your call as dialed. Please consult your directory or dial 411 for directory assistance. This is a recording. We 
Okay, that time I flashed and instead of resetting the recording, I reset the trunk entirely. Now I'm going to dial 53 plus 4 digits. I've reset the trunk again, and I'm going to dial 6, 2, 2, 2, 2. Okay. So on this same trunk, you can make calls to Warwick 986 numbers by dialing 6 plus 4 digits, but there's also an electromechanical office that can be reached by dialing 53 plus 4 digits, and this last time we got its reorder. That office is Upper Greenwood Lake, 853, so the Warwick ESC is acting as a local tandem. When you dial the 986 code, the 9 is absorbed here, the 8 goes into the trunk, which then receives the last 5 digits of the phone number. But when you're calling Upper Greenwood Lake 853, the 8 goes right into the trunk, which then receives the last six digits of the phone number. Here, the ESC is emulating what the Warwick step used to do. Having a variable number of digits on the same trunk group is apparently no problem for an ESC. Now let's see what it does with no digits at all. I'm going to dial 8 and wait. Well, this is a very boring sounding tea carrier trunk, so I'll go ahead and talk over it. It is going to time out in 31 and a half seconds. We see 33 second timing in a lot of places involving ESCs, but here doing this, it's 31 and a half. It's going to be a very analog sounding reorder tone, albeit with modern frequencies. And then after a few seconds, I'll reset the trunk and dial the last six digits of an 853 number. I'm going to turn the volume up here and compress the sounds of my dialing and associated clicks because you can actually hear the ESC seizing the Greenwood Lake trunk when I dial 53 and then the next four digits are repeated which you can also hear. Oh yeah, that's the place where the recording arrangement somehow gets that selector to slide over to the 11th terminal. I guess maybe on the one level, I don't know. But I'd forgotten that this is where I have published that in the last program. Duh. Anyway, that trunk had a really cool analog ringiness, although we're hearing it through the Warwick tea carrier. Listen to the ring at the end of the ring. When I first heard that, I thought someone's telephone bell had somehow gotten in there. But no, that's just the way the trunk resonates. Possibly because it has companding plus resonance. 
Cool. I mean, far out. This is the 1970s, of course. And by the way, on our next call to Greenwood Lake, we get a trunk equally ringy but with a different resonance. So instead of this, you get this. I am not sure what that tick we just heard was, but we aren't on the outgoing trunk yet. I'm going to continue dialing now. This time I've reset the trunk and have dialed 53 plus 3 more digits. And I'm just going to sit here and see what the ESC does when it times out. That's just local step noise from our office. Hmm, 29 and a half seconds from the end of my last dialed digit to the reorder clicking on. So we're not seeing that 33 second timing here in the local network calling into the Warwick ESC. The next call was again to the Upper Greenwood Lake recording and we again got that second resonant trunk. I'm going to cut to the middle of the call because here the Warwick ESC did something strange when I tried to reset the trunk. Twice, it goes to a reorder tone immediately. Vernon, New Jersey, 764, is also reached through the Warwick ESC acting as a local tandem. The 7 is absorbed here. The 6 goes to the same local Warwick trunk, which then receives the digit 4 plus 4 digits, and those get dialed into Vernon. Here's a call to the 764 vacant level. I will turn up the volume in the middle of the call so that you can hear the Warwick ESC dialing into Vernon. From here, the digit 6 dialed initially absorbs 
That's supposed to stop the dial tone and leave you on the first selector to dial another digit. One time, however, the dial tone came back. I dialed 6 a second time, and here we have cut into that Warwick tea carrier trunk, which is exactly what was supposed to happen. So the only thing unusual was the dial tone coming back on that first digit. Well, the fun stuff from here is the long distance stuff. Warwick has two long distance switches. One of them is an electronic switch from Stromberg Carlson which is turning out to be a switch called an ESC, and it appears to be a more advanced version of the ESC. That is the switch that acts as the local tandem, the uh, server for dial tones in Warwick itself, the 986 exchange, and it also acts as the long distance tandem for this whole sector, which includes a few places in New York, two in New Jersey, all of them owned by Warwick Valley Telephone. The other switch is the one for operator services, which my dog apparently is interested in. You like the TSD, apparently. You think it's time to play, huh? Well, you're right. TSD stands for Traffic Service Desk. The North Electric crossbar system that it's based on is called an NX1. I believe NX1 is basically saying North Exchange 1. It's a crossbar system famous for making all sorts of interesting clicks and being very fun to mess with for phone freaks. So TSD is the operator aspect of the NX1 crossbar switching system. I'm going to be using those three-letter abbreviations in the next program, ESC, TSD, NX1. If you check earlier programs in this series, starting with program 4, uh, you'll get a better idea of what they all are. I have to put the long distance stuff in the next program because if I put it here, it's going to run over an hour. So that's it for this program, and the next program will include the TSD and the ESC in its long distance function.